The story I'm about to share with you comes from Donald Trump's nephew. It comes from Donald Trump's own family member who was trying to utilize his connections with Donald Trump when Trump was disgracing the White House to help people with disabilities. And what did Donald Trump tell him? Donald Trump said to his nephew that disabled Americans, like his nephew's son, quote, should just die. They should just die, Donald Trump told his nephew. And this comes from Donald Trump's nephew in a new article published by Time. Look, as I've always said, character is everything when it comes to, I just think, all aspects of life, especially when we're dealing with people in positions of leadership. It should matter always. Let me be clear about that. And then especially when we're talking about the highest office in the United States of America, the most powerful position in the world, someone who has nuclear codes, moral character needs to matter, and that shouldn't be a Democrat or Republican thing. When I hear stories like this, it is so disheartening. Let me just share with you what Donald Trump's nephew just revealed to Time in an exclusive. When my uncle was elected president, Donald Trump, I recognized what a highly privileged position I would be in. I would have some access to the White House, and as long as that was true, I wanted to make sure I used that access for something positive. I was eager to champion something my wife Lisa and I were deeply passionate about, something we lived every day. The challenges for individuals with intellectual and development disabilities and their families. Our son, William, our third child, was born on June 30th, 1999. Within 24 hours, he went from seemingly healthy to fighting for his life in the NICU. Raising him was different from the start. William was diagnosed at three months with infantile spasms, a rare seizure disorder, which in William's case altered his development physically and cognitively. We had so many questions. What would the future hold for someone like William? How far could he go? How much could he learn? Would he ever have the chance? chance to do things that other children would do. We just didn't know. It took 15 years before his medical team could accurately pinpoint the cause of his condition, a KCNQ2 mutation, a genetic misfire that the doctors called a potassium channel deletion. And so the article then goes into the courage this family had and the work they did to help their son. And then when Donald Trump was in the White House, they were trying to bring other families that have persons with disabilities you know, into the White House in order to help them and to um, help shape American policy as it relates to Americans with disabilities. But here's what Donald Trump said during a meeting with his nephew, Fred, about Fred's son and about people who have disabilities. This is how it was described by his nephew. His nephew said, look, he sounded interested and concerned. I thought he had been touched by what the doctor and advocates in the meeting had just shared about their journey with their patients and their own family members. But I was wrong. Those people, Donald said, trailing off, the shape they're in, all the expenses, maybe those kinds of people should just die. And then Fred, Donald Trump's nephew, said, I, I truly did not know what to say. He was talking about expenses. We were talking about human lives. For Donald, I think it was really about the expenses, even though we were there to talk about efficiency, smarter investments, and human dignity. I turned and walked away. And then in the article also, Fred Trump describes a phone call he had with Donald Trump about funding to support medical care for his son, William, who is disabled. And Donald Trump responded to him, I, I don't know, Trump told his nephew. He doesn't even recognize you. Maybe you should just let him die and move down to Florida. To which Fred thought after the call, wait, what did he just say? That my son doesn't recognize me? That I should just let my son die? Did he really just say that? Should I let my son die so I could move down to Florida? That's who Donald Trump is. By the way, here's the photo of Donald Trump with his nephew Fred in the Oval Office in 2018. And this is who Donald Trump is. Donald Trump is someone who mocks people with, who have disabilities. That's one of the things he did in his 2016 campaign, and he continues to do that to this day. Remember when Donald Trump mocked a disabled reporter in November 2015? Remember, remember that? Play this clip. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. 
He's going like, I don't remember. I had the, oh, maybe that's what I said. This is 14 years ago. He still, they didn't do a retraction. Or how about this? Do you remember a few months back where uh, Donald Trump would continue to mock President Biden's stutter? So Donald Trump would give these speeches over and over again, and he would mock President Biden's stutter, like in lots of his speeches, like this one here, play this clip. Two nights ago, we all heard Crooked Joe's angry, dark, hate-filled rant of a State of the Union address. Wasn't it, didn't it bring us together? Remember, he said, I'm going to bring the country to, 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 together. I'm going to bring it. To Here's another example of Donald Trump doing that. That's why Crooked Joe is staging his pathetic fear-mongering campaign event in Pennsylvania today. Did you see him? He was stuttering through the whole thing. He's going, I'm, uh, I'm going to, he's a threat to democracy. I'm a threat. They've weaponized government. He's saying, I'm a threat to democracy. He's a threat to da, da, democracy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't read the word. He's a threat to democracy. You know how bad the press is? You know what they do? They take me saying that like that. And they say, Trump couldn't say the word democracy. <laughs> Look. No, that's what they do. They you know, and folks, this goes to the heart of character. And when I see uh, Vice President Kamala Harris surging with the energy and momentum, the prosecutor versus the felon, the future looking vision versus Donald Trump's dark dystopian vision, just, just look at the people in his crowd. Look how angry they are. You know, like, like, take a look at this. This is from Donald Trump's speech that he gave yesterday in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Donald Trump's pitch to them is not hope or we're going to do this together. Or we want to make things better. Donald Trump goes, I'm not going to be very nice. I'm not a nice person. That's part of his speech. And frankly, that's part of the appeal to this group of Americans who want fights and who, who are angry and who want to see people suffer. Here, play this clip. You know, I was supposed to be nice. They say something happened to me when I got shot. I became nice. And when you're dealing with these people, they're very dangerous people. When you're dealing with them, you can't be too nice. You really can't be. So if you don't mind, I'm not going to be nice. Is that OK? I'm not. They want me to be nice. And it's just such a sad state of politics that there would be a group of Americans led by their cosplay WWE wannabe fascist and Donald Trump who wants to see other people suffer. And by the way, you know, Donald Trump himself, when he gives these speeches, often has very serious, you know, cognitive glitches as well. Like this was from his speech yesterday. Here, play this clip. Also a total radical on a word called, do you know this, right? A word called what? Abortion. She's if you have sensitive skin, you know how hard it can be to find a product that doesn't cause irritation. But today's sponsor, OneSkin, makes it easy. Their topical supplements are formulated with soothing ingredients and natural antioxidants. Plus, they're gentle enough to use every day, even if you have sensitive skin. Founded by an all-woman team of scientists, OneSkin's products are backed by extensive lab and clinical data to validate their efficacy and safety on all skin types. Not only that, they're the first and only skin longevity company to target cellular senescence, a key hallmark of aging. Their topical supplements are the easiest way to keep your skin healthy and hydrated without the harsh ingredients or irritation often found in other skincare products. For a limited time, you can try OneSkin for 15% off using the code MIDAS when you check out at oneskin.co. Give your skin the scientifically proven gentle care it deserves with OneSkin. Treating the symptoms rather than the root causes of aging has long been the norm. Most most skincare available on the market is designed to provide a temporary reduction in visible signs of aging, addressing just the surface symptoms of an underlying decline in skin health. In a third-party 12-week clinical study performed by a third-party research organization, OS01FACE was clinically proven to strengthen the skin barrier, improve skin health markers, and diminish visible signs of aging. Wrinkles were diminished by 87% of users. OneSkin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular 
muscular aspects of aging, OneSkin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code MIDAS at oneskin.co. That's 15% off at oneskin.co with code MIDAS. After you purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. And by the way, we've compiled here at the Midas Touch Network a, a video. It's, it's a few minutes of Donald Trump constantly forgetting people's name and struggling to say things. And and so, why would you then kind of you know you know uh, mock others when when clearly you can't even even kind of remember these basic names? Like here's the video that we created. Play the clip. I think you should take a cognitive test like I did. I took a cognitive test. And I aced it. Doc Ronnie. Doc Ronnie Johnson. Does everyone know Ronnie Johnson, congressman from Texas? He was the White House doctor. How good did Elise step in that do? You know, we've endorsed Dr. Oz. We've endorsed JP, right? JD Mandel. And he's doing great. Jimmy Connors is a Jimmy, Jimmy Connors is good. These are all so happy. Mike Bolton, John Bolton is here. Mike Bolton, as you know, is in Russia. And there was progress today. I look forward to solving it. Thank you, Steve. It was Trump's fault. It's always Trump's fault. Can it ever be like Rick Gates's fault? I mean, uh, it's always Trump's fault, Rick. By the way, they never report the crowd on January 6th. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, you know, they did you know they destroyed all of the information, all of the evidence, everything deleted and destroyed all of it, all of it because of lots of things like Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people. Uh, we have some of our great business leaders and leaders, period, right behind me. Uh, I may ask Marilyn Lockheed. Uh, we appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. Yes, please. Mr. Kurt, thank you very much for your time. You know, it was interesting. Joe Biden won against Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him? Arrest their leading political opponent, They're leading by a lot, including Obama. It was, I'll tell you what, you take a look at Obama and take a look at some of the things that he's done. And Putin, you know, has so little respect for Obama that he's starting to throw around the nuclear war today. You heard that, nuclear. Thanks for giving your first comments on the bill on this show. It means a lot to us. We appreciate it, sir. Thanks a lot. You have a deal. Thanks a lot. Bye. Joe Bright, this guy is just the worst. So will Christian ever run for president against you? And you heard the prime minister, you heard Benyahu. Maybe have uh, Matt Blum speak next because he's been so incredible in so many ways. He fights so hard. He loves his state. He loves the people. A new, think of it, a new branch of the United States military, United States Armed Forces called Air Force. I never talked about that. That's something we never talked about. But well, what we just saw, we just left pleasure. And a very big hello to a place where we've done very well. Sioux Falls. Thank you very much, Sioux Falls. And thank you. So, Sioux City, let me ask you, and the worst president in the history of our country who is cognitively impaired, we would be in World War II very quickly. The worst president in the history of our country will be a fading nightmare. He'll be a fading, I have fading memory. Right, and as Donald Trump does that, I mean, I think about you know, just, you know, at, at all of his rallies, the, you know, the cursing, the F word, he throws around the F word at his campaign rallies. He, he encourages, <clears throat> encourages kids to curse. Like here, this is Donald Trump cursing at his rally. Play this clip. Yeah, but if you become president and you don't like somebody or if somebody's beating you by 10, 15 or 20 points like we're doing with crooked Joe Biden, let's indict the motherfucker, let's indict <laughs> Like here's Donald Trump at a high school talking about, it's hard for me to even say this, talking about being urinated on by hookers. This is what Trump is saying in his speech to a high school. I can't, like, the fact that I even have to say that, like, he's speaking about, that? yeah, he speaks about golden showers to high school kids and high school gyms. Play the clip. He was with four hookers. You think that was good that night to go up and tell my wife, it's not true, darling, I love you very much. It's not true. Actually, that one she didn't believe because she said he's a germaphobe. He's not into that, you know? 
He's not into golden showers, as they say they call that. He's not. I don't like that idea. No, I didn't. I thought that would be a big problem. I was going to have a rough night, but that one she was very good on. She said, no. And here's Donald Trump in a church leading a, a chant of curse words, leading a, a, a curse chant in a place of worship. Play the clip. So they come up with something that's fake, just like everything else they do. It's all fake. The impeachments are fake. The court cases are a disgrace to our country. Everything is fake. So they come up with this order. I, I won't say it because I don't like using the word bullshit in front of these beautiful children. So I won't say it. I will not say it. But this thing allows millions of people. <laughs> And then, of course, you have what Donald Trump posted yesterday, where he posts this racist meme of Vice President Kamala Harris, and you see it right here. So, uh, again, the moral character has to matter, you know. And I've I've shared this with you, you know. Um, my wife is pregnant, and we're expecting our first child, a baby girl. Um, we're expecting her in in, in September. And I just, I, you know, just as a girl, that as as just a human, like someone who treats others like that, someone who engages in that behavior, should not be a leader of this country. I don't care what political party you're with. That's my view. You could share yours with me. Let me know what you think. Hit subscribe. Let's get to three million. Love this video. Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas.